I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're on the uh, outskirts of Totten, quite near Netley Marsh, slightly to the west of Southampton. Actually we're not technically in the New Forest at the moment but we will be crossing the border shortly and we're going to be doing a roughly three mile circular route that's promoted by the New Forest National Park as the Tatchbury Mount Trail. And it'll be a countryside walk that primarily heads up and around the Iron Age hill fort at Tatchbury Mount. Now I'm filming at the end of November. You can probably see from the steam from my breath, it's a bitterly cold morning, but the sun is out and fingers crossed it's going to uh, warm up. We're going to be uh, wrapped up anyway, but it's going to be one of those uh, really crisp late autumn days, perfect for walking, so do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at the Hangar Farm Art Centre, which is just behind me here. It's a restored grade two listed timber frame barn that houses a theatre stage, cafe and exhibition centre. Basically it's a community hub bringing arts to all the area. It used to be a, a farm, in fact Hanger Farm was likely to have been occupied and farmed for over 900 years and at one stage it was a 187 acre dairy farm up until the, the 1950s. It was turned into a, an art centre in 2005 and the farmhouse is still here. Um, it was originally built in 1759 and then rebuilt in 2008. Well the New Forest National Park do produce a very good guide on this walk. However, um, some of their route directions are slightly inaccurate right at the start, so uh, forgive me if early on I uh, go through um, some of those directions in, in finer detail. So basically, you leave the art centre and head off across some open grassland in a northwesterly direction, not northeast, as it said in the guide. Let's go. And at the end of the uh, open area we're going to start heading into a, a little residential bit so through here and then we turn right through this little car park and into Mansug Walk not Mansug Way as it said in the guide and this takes us into a stone chat drive Ignore the turning to Aspen Walk. <laughs> Don't worry, I will put some, uh, I'll put a map up on screen uh, and you can always take a freeze of that if you're going to be doing the walk so that you don't get lost. And down Stone Chat uh, Drive, look out for this little electricity generator and then a path that heads to the left. We then come to a busy road called Michigan Way and head left along the footpath. We then take the next right down Garland Way and then we take the next left down Oleander Drive. Is that how you pronounce it? And then down here, we're nearly there folks, nearly there. And then finally look out for is it Corylus Court? And then there's a little gravel track alongside and that's gonna take us out into the countryside. In fact, just here um, in days gone by, uh, there used to be a farm, Hazel Farm. It was one of three dairy farms uh, uh, in the Tatchbury Mount estate. As you can see, it's become a housing estate. The Hazel Farmhouse still, well, sort of exists Although I was speaking to the owner and he told me that most of the original was burnt down and only the, the front bit is actually uh, original. I mean, it is amazing if you look at uh, uh, an old map of the, uh, the late 19th century, the whole area around here was just three farms. There were no houses at all. It was all open land and it was the same uh, up until, well, even a 1950s map shows the same. I tell you, <laughs> Put me in the middle of a forest and I'll have no problems 
having an idea roughly where I am from looking at the, the way the, the trees grow, looking at to where their roots are pointing, that sort of thing. But put me in a built up residential area. <laughs> I'm like a fish out of water. Anyway, let's uh, kick on into the countryside. Well, we're just about to head into the New Forest National Park itself. When we go underneath this uh, underpass, it um, carries the, uh, the Totten Bypass, the A326. In fact, when it was built in the early 1990s, um, I guess the farm must have still been here. Um, hence why it's such a large underpass to allow farm machinery to go through. Well, hopefully you can see this, it's quite dark in this underpass, but, well, I know graffiti is graffiti, but um, you do have to admire the artwork there. What's that, a uh, Star Wars Stormtrooper? I think it is. Well, now we're on the other side of the, uh, the bypass and going into the countryside, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to follow this walk because it is well signposted. So uh, we're going to head westwards. Um, Tatchbury Mount itself is in that direction. That's our homeward leg. So we're going to carry along here this rather pleasant uh, path, which is quite an, an ancient track, I believe. Uh, certainly there are some uh, banks and ditches either side so I'm guessing it's been used pretty well thoroughly over the last few centuries or so. So it's a beautiful time of year to be out walking. We've had a very late autumn uh, this year and so the leaves are only just beginning to fall but so much gold and brown and yellow colours about and uh, with the sunshine <laughs> it's gorgeous especially through this little track. Now you can probably just about make out over my uh, left shoulder there uh, a large white building and that's uh, Tatchbury Manor, the only remnant of a lost medieval village, first recorded in AD 903. And the village might have been destroyed during the creation of the New Forest in the, the late 11th century, but certainly by 1475, uh, Tatchbury Village disappears from, from all records. But looking at the house there, some sort of high status house has stood here for hundreds of years. And the house today originates from the 17th century, but there may have been a royal hunting lodge uh, there when the new forest was created. But at some stage it became a nursing home, but it's now closed. And I think there are plans for it to become residential. It certainly looks abandoned and unloved and boarded up now. Well, at the end of the, uh, that track, we hit a, a lane, stopped heading westwards and changed direction and we're now heading in a northerly direction on the sort of uh, western side of uh, Tatchbury Manor. Ah, there's the footpath sign that we were looking for to Tatchbury Mount. Just look through this field here. That, quite wonderful again. Beautiful colours of the leaves and the sunshine. It, uh, you've got to just got to enjoy it while it's uh, like this for such a limited time. And just over actually to my left is uh, Tatchbury Manor Farm. It once uh, had a huge dairy herd here and there are still some lovely old buildings. It's now a farm shop and I think the farm shop is actually located in the old milking parlour. Anyway, we are now going to start heading uh, eastwards through another very pretty little wooded area, Tatchbury Copse. <laughs> Thank you. 
lovely uh, enchanting bit of woodland that was. Well we're just on the western side now of the uh, hill fort which we're shortly going to explore. Got a little uphill section. We're quite, we're quite glad uh, Logan and I it's only a three mile walk today. Yesterday uh, I was out with um, a friend Kevin Hall and some uh, of his mates uh, down at the Pagham uh, Nature Reserve in West Sussex and Kevin had advertised the walk as four and a half miles. It ended up being seven and a half miles. Uh, Kevin does have his own YouTube channel, Kevin's Rambles. Do check it out. I would warn you though, double check his mileage figures. <laughs> Okay, well this little track that I'm just about to go up now, it goes through uh, what was a walled garden of the uh, Tatchbury Mount mansion that actually stood on top of uh, where the hill fort was. And uh, the grassed areas to the southwest here were once cultivated gardens. Well, just ahead, I can make out the western side of the hill fort but before we explore there just to the uh, the side so it's a little bit darker on this side of the fort but uh, yes on the ground here you can make out some concrete remains and this is where the heated greenhouse for the mansion that was on top of the fort used to be and Looking at the size of the foundations, it was quite a substantial building itself. And this indeed is the, the western side of the hill fort. Although <laughs> the building in front of me, <laughs> that was, uh, well, the remains of the, the boiler room for the mansion that was uh, built on top of the fort, or where the fort used to be. And then there's some steps here. Let's go have a I'll look up and see if we can see any evidence of the earthworks and yes it is quite easy to make out the banks <laughs> a little gloomy but hopefully you can see this okay there was an iron age hill fort here between 800 bc and ad 43 and it's oval shaped about five acres enclosing the top of the hill fort and there are two parallel banks between three meters and four and a half meters high with a six meter terrace between them and there was also a third bank but uh, that's quite tricky to make out but the whole area around here has been disturbed so much over the years it's difficult to fully know how it was used and the entire site was landscaped in the 18th century when uh, the mansion and gardens were were built and in 1927 uh, the mansion that was on top was sold to the Hampshire County Council as, and I quote, a colony for mental defectives, unquote. And it opened in the 1930s and over the years the site has grown and the NHS took over the site in the 1950s with the buildings dedicated to mental health services and part of it is a nursing home now. The mansion, however, was demolished completely in 2006. We're now on the southern side of the fort and uh, we'll be making our way along what must be the terrace between the two banks and you've got this brown carpet of leaves on the uh, on the ground there and then look at this quite terrific beech tree in front of me here see if I can get it in the picture it keeps going and going and going. I wonder how many years that's been here. Well, from the southern side of the fort, some fantastic views from up here. And it is quite hazy, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. But I can just about make out the uh, Fawley oil refinery in the far distance. And of course, uh, you used to be able to see the um, Fawley power station tower that had been there for 50 odd years 
but uh, it was demolished three or four weeks ago. But you can see why this is such a fantastic place for a fort. It's on a high position and a lot of these trees wouldn't have been here. You can see for miles. Okay, well let's have a let's have a little wander to see if there's anything on the actual top of the fort itself. Well, there's some fantastic views from the very, very top. And just looking down, this is uh well, that's the Southampton docks in the very far distance. And then just down in front of me, where these trees are, or well, parallel to it, is where there was once a Roman road. I think it went all the way to Leap Beach and the coast there. And then if I just slowly pan round so that you can see what the top of Tatchbury Mount looks like. There are um, a few of the foundations left of the old uh, mansion that was here, but uh, nothing else. Gosh, look at those um, tall trees there. Are they, um, I think they're Wellingtonia, aren't they? Or the giant redwood. They remind me of the, uh, the two tall trees at the, uh, the Boulderwood Tall Tree Trail. I mean, the one in the middle is an absolute beauty. I wonder how many uh, squirrels are in there then, Logan? <laughs> well, just as we've come off the uh, hill fort and uh, seeing this vast open area in front of me, apparently they reckon that uh, way back in AD 508, a big battle took place here between, uh, I get, think his name was Nathan Liod. I hope I've pronounced his name correctly. He was a British king and Surdic, a Saxon invader, and the British actually lost the battle and some 5,000 people lost their lives, including uh, the British King. Well, having said all that, some historians suggest that uh, no such battle took place, or if it did happen, uh, it didn't happen here. I think it's very difficult uh, to be completely accurate in that sort of period of history between, well, when the Romans left and when the Normans arrived, so little information was actually written down or recorded, so there, there's a lot of guesswork. So the battle might have happened here or possibly somewhere else. <laughs> well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. Not the longest walk that we've ever done, but an interesting one nonetheless. We're on the homeward leg now, get back to the car, and hopefully the cafe will be open at the Arts Centre. So until we meet again, thanks for watching, and cheerio. Well folks, here we are back at the Arts Centre for our well-deserved cup of coffee. Mmm. Oh, don't worry. I've got a bony O for him. <laughs> <laughs>